So we do see many of our um, you know, constituents from District 3 and across Henry County joining us this evening. Uh, we're going to allow for just a little bit longer uh, to allow these uh, folks to join us. Uh, we know that some people run a little bit behind, um, but we'll give it a few more minutes uh, so we can get as many people in before we start our presentation. And for those who have already joined us, we do thank you for being here this evening and we appreciate your patience. We'll get started here shortly. Well, good evening, everyone. Let me thank you for carving out time in your evening to spend with us to talk about the future of education here in Henry County Schools and to discuss education plus referendum on the ballot uh, right now on the ballot until March 16th. Um, I'm Mary Elizabeth Davis. I'm the superintendent of Henry County Schools. And it really is my pleasure to be with you along with my panelist um, colleagues uh, this evening. And uh, as I start with some introductions, um, I just want to uh, thank those who could um, join us and those who will view our recording later. But I'll start with J.D. Hardin, our Executive Director of Communications and Public Relations and our host for this evening. J.D., thank you for your work to get this um, forum to develop. Um, I'd also like to introduce you to um, Shanika Clay, the Chief Financial Officer for Henry County Schools and uh, Dr. Carl Knowlton, the Chief of Staff for Henry County Schools. And the reason that we bring this panel together is for the Chair of our Board of Education, Board Member for District 3, Mrs. Holly Cobb. Can you say a quick hello, Mrs. Cobb? Hi, thank you all for joining us and taking time out of your uh, busy schedule to come and learn about East Plus tonight. We're honored to have you. That's right. And also joining us is um, partner in education extraordinaire and a um, uh, co-chair of our um, committee for our children's future, uh, Mr. Rod Meadows. So uh, Mr. Meadows, can you give us a wave? And uh, thank you for being with us tonight as well. Now I'll tell you, there is no doubt that we are in a season that feels endlessly exhausting. And really, on so many levels, uh, could be easy to ask, why would we carve out time to have a conversation like this in a season like this? Well, I'll tell you why. Because our commitment to young people and their education in Henry County Schools has not waned or paused for even a moment. So despite the complexities that these past 11 months have brought to not only our school system, but our greater community, we can't wait to invest in our children's future. We can't wait for the future to do that. And so today as we have a conversation about how the extended work of our community conversations a year ago and the strategic plan that emerged from those community conversations and how that has led us to a place of how we can come back together and invest together in our children and in the schooling experience they have in Henry County. I know you are going to be pleased to see the real investment in opportunities for robotics and STEM experiences, the real investment in fine arts so that we are a destination community for fine arts education. I know you are eager to see how we prepare to handle the anticipated growth well as a community of schools. And really, I know you are 
eager to see the continued investment in instructional resources in the hands of our teachers and our, and our students. So to bring today's conversation to life, I want to start by actually turning, uh, passing the baton um, to uh, the chair of our Henry County Board of Education, board member for District 3, Mrs. Cobb. Let me pass the baton to you. Thank you so much for that uh, opening, Dr. Davis. Um, I would like to start by showing you actually a picture of our current Board of Education for Henry County Schools. Um, we are just so honored to serve every district in our great county. Um, at this time, we actually serve approximately 43,000 students and approximately 6,000 employees, which makes us currently the largest employer in Henry County. Um, and at the bottom of the screen, you see uh, that Henry County is uh, actually the second fastest growing county in the state, which if you've spent any amount of time recently driving around the county, you may agree that uh, that is an accurate uh, statistic. Um, so I'm so honored to be here with you today. Thank you again for just carving out some time for us. Um, this is such an important discussion and we love when our community joins us uh, as a part of this. I would like to just say that this board actually um, operates under a, a governance model, a strong governance model, which actually began a few years ago when we uh, came together and established our core beliefs and commitments, which actually currently drives uh, a lot of the work that happens in our school system now. Um, what we have recently been busy uh, developing actually though is our strategic plan. Uh, you may be familiar with that term, uh, and I know Dr. Davis touched on that a minute ago, but what was so great about our strategic plan was um, actually before the pandemic started over a year ago, we had the opportunity when you could actually meet more often in person, we had the opportunity to get out and about in the community and host um, forums and meetings and uh, things like that to invite our community in to listen to our community's voice because that was so important to us as a, a board. We really want to hear what, what were our community's hopes and dreams for the future? What did our community want to see us incorporate into our school system? So um, uh, that was just a great experience just to uh, talk one-on-one -on -one with so many of our community members. And Dr. Davis touched on uh, some of the things that you'll be seeing in the presentation today. Um, our community really wants to see greater exposure to STEM and robotics throughout our school system. Um, also, transportation is always a huge issue. Um, I'm so excited about what our East Loss could provide as far as transportation, um, as well as uh, increased safety and security, uh, additions to our fine arts programs. There's just such a, a great wealth of um, things that we have been able to incorporate in our East Loss 6 from listening to our community. So we appreciate you and your involvement in our school system because uh, you, you've probably heard this before. We are truly better together and we really mean that. So thank you again for joining us today. And at this time, I will turn it over to Mr. J.D. Harden. Thank you, Board Chair Cobb, and thank you all for being here this evening. I, I'm appreciative uh, to be able to, to share the screen tonight with those who are on our panel. And I want to let you guys know that as we uh, move through this presentation, if there are questions that do develop uh, for you, there is a Q&A feature at the bottom of your uh, Zoom uh, platform and screen. We just ask that you would uh, populate uh, your question in that area, and we will try to respond to that at the end of our presentation this evening. So any questions that come up, please do not hesitate whatsoever. Whatsoever. So what we really want to do is start off by, you know, talking to you about the history of SPLOS and then what are the successes of our SPLOS that have occurred over our first five eSPLOS. And then uh, I'm going to ask uh, Ms. Shanika Clay, our Chief Financial Officer, to talk about what's on the horizon for eSPLOS 6. And then we'll uh, allow uh, Mr. Meadows to be able to jump in and provide some different perspectives uh, from the community. And then we'll wrap it up again, as I mentioned, with some questions and answers. So let's start first with the history of SPLOS. Now, you've probably heard of that term before, um, SPLOS. We are utilizing an eSPLOS, which as you can see on your screen, it's an education special purpose local option sales tax. Now, way back when, and it's hard to believe that way back when, talks about the late 1990s, but in 1996, 
uh, the Georgia General Assembly allowed for a constitutional amendment to be put on the ballot for approval by the voters of the state, which would solve a very critical need for our school districts, which was how do we keep up with the uh, pace of growth, the expansion of our student population in our districts, when 90% of our general operating budgets uh, constitute uh, paying for salaries and benefits for employees. And that's not just Henry County, that's all over the state uh, and school districts all over the state. So uh, the General Assembly put that out as a constitutional amendment. The voters of the state approved allowing local school districts to put that option before their voters to tax themselves one penny of every dollar of everything that's sold in Henry County, uh, you know, or, or any county, I should say, uh, in any good, whether it be food, transportation, uh, material items, it doesn't matter. Uh, and so in 1997, Henry County, along with counties all over the state, school districts all over the state, jumped at that chance to help supplement um, their budget with this one cent sales tax so that they could keep up with the pace uh, and growth within their district. It's important to keep in mind that each East Floss is a covers a five year period and the pennies that are collected cover that five year period. And as you get close to the end of each five year period, you have to go back to the voters and ask them again uh, for a continuation of that one cent uh, sales tax collection. And so we are actually in our fifth East Floss right now. So we started in 1997, voters approved 98, first pennies rolled in, and we've successfully uh, had voters approve it. And we like to think because we've held to our word and we've been very transparent with these projects and we've actually accomplished uh, building and completing all these projects that we put out for public consideration. So moving right along, we wanna make sure that people understand what East Floss can be used for. It can only be used for capital projects. There's a few examples there on your screen. Construction, technology. Uh, construction is one that a lot of people instantly recognize, but technology, transportation, learning equipment and resources, all vitally important components of what East Bloss can go to support. And we've most definitely utilized those uh, East Bloss after East Bloss that we've uh, had here in Henry County. And we'll talk about that a little bit later on, but we wanna make sure people understand this can't be used to hire people. It can't be used to pay people. It can't be used to provide benefits to people. It's only for those capital projects, which go directly back to supporting our students and our staff members uh, in you know, ensuring a high quality education for the residents and families of Henry County. Um, wanna make sure again that uh, people also understand how is East Bloss um, uh, paid for? Where do those pennies come from? Very simple answer is anyone who eats, sleeps or shops in Henry County or even owns a business uh, in Henry County, when a dollar is spent, one penny of that goes towards public education. Now, somebody in Hawaii right now could be purchasing something from a, a business in Stockbridge or Hampton or Locust Grove or McDonough. And that one penny of every dollar that that person in Hawaii spends in our local economy goes towards supporting our schools. So it's not just the residents of Henry County who are responsible for this one cent sales tax. You guys have seen it, NASCAR's on the horizon. They're gonna be zooming into our county really soon. Fans from all over the country. And every time that they spend a dollar here in Henry County, we get a penny of it. Uh, youth sports teams as they come to use our fields, our great parks and recreation uh, services. Every time they come here and spend a, spend a dollar, we get a penny. All those people who travel up and down I-75 to Disney World or Snowbirds or wh whoever, anytime they stop in Henry County for gas, food, lodging, a penny of that goes to uh, of every dollar goes towards Henry County Schools. It's important to point out a little fun fact: sixty-two billion pennies have been collected since we started collecting the very first pennies back in nineteen ninety-eight. So as you can see on the slide right here, uh, there's uh, you know been quite a bit of growth uh, in Henry County. As you saw earlier, we are the second fastest growing county in the state at this moment. Back uh, in the late 90s, early 2000s, we were probably the fastest growing county in the state. You can see that our population uh, almost doubled from 1999 to 2009. Our student enrollment most definitely uh, approached that uh, doubling um, you know, feature. And then of course you see the number of schools did that as well. We couldn't have a student enrollment that doubled and then just put kids in the same buildings. We had to create more space for learning opportunities all across our district. You can see obviously too, more students, we need more employees to make sure that our students 
are receiving the best education and of course all operations are tended to across the district. Now from 2009 to 2019, you see that there's still been a slight increase, um, an increase nonetheless, and we've had to keep pace with that. But we also know that right now we are getting ready to hit one of those major spikes and we have to be re ready for it. And East Blast has been one of the key drivers to help us maintain that readiness. So now we've talked about how East Blast came about. Let's talk about what we've been successful with, starting with the very first East Blast back in 1997 when it was approved by the voters in 98 when the first project started coming in. As you can see, from this slide right here, we constructed six brand new schools to keep pace with the growth at the time. There were some renovations that took place at a couple of our schools. You also see that we had one new middle school gym uh, constructed, and that's what's at now the former Henry County Middle School. Um, but uh, we also had things like technology, roof repairs, which kind of speak to uh, building maintenance. Uh, and then you also see that land acquisition. The strategic part about land acquisition helps us on down the road and you'll see several schools that uh, we've constructed over the years and it's land acquisition like in East Boss One that helped us achieve the opportunity to put these schools in these strategic locations. But you're going to see some uh, repetitive items on here and that's that's just part of East Boss. It's cyclical and so every five years there's things that you know continue to be a part of this because they have to be updated uh, as a part of this growth. So moving right along to East Boss Two, uh, those first pennies actually started rolling in in 2003, approved in 2002 by the voters, um, but eight new schools were constructed. We had two additions, as you can see right there. We uh, you know, took care of our gym flooring because at the time I believe it was carpet in all of our elementary schools, and that's not a fun surface to play on, um, but we also acquired more technology, some more land, and the current district administrative offices uh, where we are now uh, where it was a renovated school. And so we completed that as a part of East Blast Two. We'll talk about uh, future administrative needs uh, as we get into the East Blast Six project list, but wanted to point those out as well. Moving into East Blast Three, you don't see as many uh, construction projects by way of brand new facilities, but you do see four schools right there were completed. We did focus on renovating four schools. You also see a build out and an expansion of our technology infrastructure, more land. Now you're seeing some of our buses come into play. It's important to keep in mind that Henry County schools, like many districts across the state, receive uh, little to no, no funding from the state uh, as it pertains to transportation. So East Floss has really helped us uh, keep up with the needs of our transportation department from a new investment uh, standpoint. You also see uh, listed there at the bottom, uh, the addition of security cameras and upgrades to our security cameras, vitally important to what we feel as uh, the crux of a high quality education, a safe learning, and spa a learning space are the safety and security enhancements that we provide for our school buildings each and every day. Moving along to East Bloss 4, you see that we only have one brand new building as a part of this East Bloss, but we do have the additions to Eagles Landing High School, Stockbridge High School, Eagles Landing Middle School, and one of the hallmark programs of our entire district, and that's the Academy for Advanced Studies. Wildly popular, still just one of uh, the most uh, popular and sought after programs uh, for our students who are wanting to uh, attend this college and career academy. Uh, that was originally just an addition on Henry County High School. We found it to be such a, a wildly successful program that we needed to build two replacement schools, one of which was McDonough High School and the Academy for Advanced Studies took over the entire space there at the former Henry County High School. You see also that there are 14 school renovations and updates, substantial renovations and updates that we also uh, carried over into East Plus 5, which we'll touch on in a second, for 35 additional schools. So every school in our district between East Plus 4 and 5 received substantial renovations and updates. Again, you see some of those familiar items listed in there. Um, you also see security doors listed on there. Another uh, enhancement to our safety and security features. And for those of you who have attended a uh, middle school uh, concert in the warmer months of the year, knowing how uh, warm that those uh, facilities can be, uh, with some uh, unused East Blast dollars that actually came in uh, after all of our projects were complete, we were able to add middle school uh, gym air conditioning to make that a little bit more comfortable experience for those uh, in attendance. So let's move along now to where we are currently, and that's East Blast 5. 
So as you see on this particular uh, slide, uh, those two replacement schools I talked about, and they are beautiful facilities right here, centrally located in McDonough, uh, McDonough Middle and High School. You also see the addition of a performing arts center on the north side of the county. If you haven't been by there yet uh, in Fairview, you will, you, you're missing out on probably one of the premier performing arts uh, uh, centers in the entire state of Georgia. But that third item I'd like to also point out on this list is vitally important to Henry County Schools uh, and especially during this pandemic. Now, when this list was approved by voters and when this list was constructed um, using voter, uh, you know, you know, community members' voices and the school board at the time, uh, no one could have foreseen that in 2020 we'd be done with the pandemic. But thankfully, with those student learning devices um, you know, in hand, we were able to transition into this new remote learning environment um, pretty seamlessly. I mean, we've been learning and, and, and modernizing it and making it better as we go, but there were a lot of school districts that when this hit, they didn't have these learning devices like we did. And so our students were at a, a big advantage and we're very appreciative of the support of previous East Bloss um, for things known and things unknown at the time. But you also see on this list, uh, all of our high schools have received multi-purpose facilities to help with a lot of the extracurricular activities that uh, are part of a high school experience. You also see synthetic turf fields for our sports complexes that are, are jointly shared between middle and high schools. You also see, again, some renovations. You also see uh, bus and transportation. Again, more focus being placed on that. Uh, and as, as always, our instructional resources. We have to have uh, the best, the latest, the most up-to-date information to be able to provide uh, just such an exceptional learning experience, not only for our students, but also the teaching experience for our employees. So that really takes us to where we are in East Plus 5. We're still collecting pennies on it. It's not done yet, but we now, as we as the pattern holds, we as we get closer to the end of each East Plus, we start to uh, formulate those plans for the subsequent one so we can put those before the voters to ensure continuation if that's so approved by the voters in Henry County. So I want to make sure before I turn it over to Shanika that you guys understand that this time last year we were wrapping up um, several meetings all across our district um, as a part of our strategic planning process. Thousands and thousands of voices were heard during these very important uh, meetings to help really shape shape the future of Henry County Schools. And that is no different than what you're going to see on this list um, that Ms. Clay will be talking about. The items that you've seen came out of these very uh, conversations and we're proud to be able to show these to you and uh, have them uh, put up for consideration um, by everyone in Henry County. So without further ado, I'm gonna turn it over to Ms. Clay as she uh, works through this list of items for East Plus 6. Thank you, JD. And hello, everyone. Um, JD gave us a nice fun fact about the 62 billion pennies that have come in to date. And we've just walked through what those 62 billion pennies have been put towards. And as he mentioned, as we uh, come before you with a proposed project list for East Plus 6, these pennies don't if, if approved by the voters, don't actually collect until 2023 through the 2028 period. And so I wanted to be clear that this is not a new tax that is before the voters. This is a continuation of a tax, approving a continuation of a tax that has been supported um, since 1997. Um, and so I'm about to transition into the project list. And as JD just said, I just wanted to be very clear that the projects that you're gonna see are a reflection of your voice, is the voice that we heard from the community and that was shared with the board members. And so first and foremost, our schools must remain safe. And so safety and security is a top focus. And our current proposal calls for adding security access control at every school by way of a key card and buzzer access system. We're also planning to upgrade some fire alarm systems and intercom systems at the schools that are due for that upgrade. And we keep that on a maintenance schedule across our entire district. Another bedrock item for our district is technology. Like JD said, where would we be had we not made that investment in East Floss 5? Well, those computers are approaching five years in age. So we need to look into doing a refresh of all of those student devices and teacher devices. And as we refresh that technology, we need to ensure that we have the appropriate infrastructure undergirding ourselves to ensure that we don't fall prey to some of the attacks that can occur in the cyber system. 
transportation, it was an item that we definitely heard come through as a priority for our community. This East West has a plan to really update our fleet with a bus replacement plan of about 25 new clean fuel air conditioned buses each year. Um, when we talk about a gym in the summer, imagine a bus in some of those warmer months. And so this plan is really going to help us uh, update our fleet. Uh, in addition to that, we are looking to update and create a new transportation facility on the west side of the county. And that's really going to help us give some flexibility to maintaining our buses. We currently have about eight bays in our current facility, which needs to be updated. And we were looking about creating eight bays on that western side of the county, just to give our transportation um, team some support in keeping our buses maintained and ensuring our buses can get back to the schools on time. Instructional resources. Um, so as JD mentioned, I, we often think about our construction projects, but you know we have made some significant investments in our instructional resources through our SPLOS, and we are going to continue to do that. We are looking to expand our investments in the resources to world languages, our CTAE, which is our vocational type pathways, our fine arts, our health and our physical education, and just continue to ensure we keep a balance of print and digital resources before our students. Fine arts investments, going a little bit deeper. Um, we are so just interested in investing and ensuring that we grow and replace our equipment and instruments and expand this to schools that don't currently have this at the middle and high school level. So we want to ensure that we can purchase that instrumentation and create new orchestra programs. We also want to ensure that we have equipment for our other fine arts programs like choral, music, visual arts, and theater classes at the K through 12 level. Robotics, and I will also say STEM, and we'll talk more about STEM later, was definitely something that came through in the community uh, conversations that um, we heard as we were building the strategic plan and now as we look to have our East Blast project list. And so we are looking to make investments in having robotics course materials at every school, K through 12, to ensure that we give opportunity and access to the Henry County learners in the field of robotics. And then with Common with other East Floss, we do see that there are opportunities for some new construction as we look to maintain and um, you know, stay ahead of community growth. So there are a handful of three new schools that are being proposed. There's a STEM high school and two elementary schools that will provide some relief uh, to the schools you see listed on the slide uh, to ensure that we have a path to accept growth that we see in the community. One thing that I think is of interest, um, I've heard that in the 2000s, there was a time where we were opening schools of trailers and we had over 800 trailers in the community. Um, and we are down to a small number of trailers in the community and this current East Floss plan actually would allow us to eliminate the trailers that we currently have in our system. And so that just speaks to the investment this community has continued to make in ensuring that our schools have the capacity to serve our students there's also some opportunities for us to ensure as the school system and county has grown, our staffing that needs to support the schools has also grown. So ensuring that we have the space to accommodate that. And I talked earlier about the transportation facility. And then we have six schools that um, will have expansions or additions added to them to ensure that they can accommodate the growth we see. And I would say there was a very detailed study done to understand where we needed to ensure we had the appropriate capacity for our students. And all schools that you see listed here address the hot spots that we saw in that detailed analysis. So Dutchtown High School, Dutchtown Middle School, Locust Grove High School, Ola Middle School, Ola High School, and Union Grove Middle School are set to have some additions so that we can accommodate space for students. All schools in this East class are set to get a digital marquee. So if you're familiar with the monument signs that are at the front of the schools, they have some of the sandwich boards where you have to put up the block letters. Uh, we know that there are more modern ways for us to communicate to our community and help ensure that our principal leaders um, can ensure that their community is getting the latest and greatest information. So we're looking to make an investment so that all schools can have updated school marquees that allow them to better communicate with their community. And then JD shared some of the things that, that we've had that have been common throughout all of the East Blast. 
East Blast really does help ensure that we can maintain our facilities and keep some of the systems that are core to its running um, upgraded and replace them. So we have 10 schools that are set to have roofing replacements, eight schools that need HVAC replacements, and then 15 schools where we're looking to have some energy management enhancements. And these things are all routine in nature and our schools are all on a schedule so that we ensure that we keep up to date with what's required at the time. And I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Rod Meadows uh, to talk about voting in Henry County. Thank you, Ms. Clay. Uh, and thank you for the opportunity to be a part of uh, tonight's panel and discussion. Uh, for those of you who are online, uh, I appreciate so much your investing the time into learning about East Plus. You know, I'm a lawyer in the community. I've represented the Development Authority now for a long time. <laughs> And every time we entice a business to come to Henry County so that our citizens can work here and play here and not have to commute into Atlanta for jobs, one of the most important things that they're interested in is our school system. Uh, I can't tell you how proud I am of the leadership of our school system. Uh, Holly Cobb is our chair carries on the tradition of her father having been chair of the Board of Education for I don't know, something like 20 years. Um, I'm, I'm so pleased with Dr. Davis and the leadership that she has provided as superintendent. Uh, Dr. Knowlton is uh, the COO and Ms. Clay, you, you've got an opportunity here tonight to see the kind of leadership that they have provided. Uh, I was honored to be a part as chair of the uh, East Blast Five. And it's been a real source of pride to me to be able to say that the Board of Education, those of us who were a part of that committee, had nothing to do with the choices that were made, but the choices that were made were so wise in regard to the computers that were uh, obtained for the students, as has been demonstrated during the course of, of this COVID pandemic. So the Board of Education, the leadership of the board have done a great job. It's my job as a member of the community, a lawyer in the community, to do everything I can to try to help get the vote out. It's critically important. We're all tired of elections. We're all tired of hearing political ads, but it is so important. This is the only item on the ballot and voting is currently open. Early voting is open right now until Friday the 22nd of this month, and I'm sorry, until Friday the 12th of this month, and then on the 16th is the actual day of the referendum. But importantly, on Saturday the 6th, we have Saturday voting available for us for those who can't get out any other time. So those of you who have taken the time to participate tonight, please, please ask all of your neighbors, all of your family members, your Sunday school class, the people that you work with, please urge them to get out and vote yes for East Blast 6. You've heard tonight why this East Blast is so important, how it's gonna lead us into the future and continue the success that we've enjoyed here in Henry County with our school system. Thank you, JD, for inviting me to be a part of tonight's panel. always forget to you know unmute myself as I lead back into that but I do want to thank uh, you Mr. Meadows for those words that you're able to share of course uh, everybody on the screen who's been able to uh, play a part in this and also share uh, their insight uh, around East Bloss. Now is the time that we uh, alluded to earlier about the opportunity to ask questions uh, at this moment I haven't seen any questions come in the, the Q&A feature I'm just going to take that as there was just such a you know wonderful presentation that there were no questions but uh we know that there probably are a few and so we're here to be able to answer those so we'll give it a second to see if anybody has one um i know that uh, as we've we've been able to share this out uh you know a lot of people are asking how do i find out what is my school getting what is what is my what will my school be receiving and so what we'd like to share with people is that you can go to your school's website 
find this exact presentation that we just went through. The only difference is you're going to find at the end of that presentation is a specific page for your school. And so you'll find out that uh, every school in our district uh, will be receiving many of those items that you saw on the screen. So from safety and security, transportation, technology, instructional resources and materials, marquees, all of those things are going to happen at every one of our schools in our district. You're going to make sure that we have all the fine arts investment and the robotics. All of that will be taking place. Now, there are a few schools who may get one or two items here that's a little bit different, and you saw that in the presentation tonight. Um, you know, we talked about it, and Superintendent Davis, you could probably speak to it a little bit, and when we talk about the expansions uh, at some of the schools that actually are right here in uh, District 3, or, or District 3 families would be attending happy to elaborate on uh, specifically we see additions for Ola Middle School, Ola High School, and Union Grove Middle School. Um, and of course those who are viewing, um, it doesn't take but a second to drive around our community and see just how attractive it is to um, live, work, play, and learn um, right here. And, uh, and so what you actually will see at the Ola High School complex where Ola Middle School and Ola High School share the same campus is that both of those additions will not only um, not, not require us to use trailers today, but not even for the foreseeable future. And uh, our anticipated growth of the student body for the OLA cluster will be well managed for the, um, for the coming years um, by these very substantial additions. Substantial additions that will hold um, at the high school more than 300 student expansion um, to the OLA high school community. Um, but let me also add that there is the opportunity to add a second entrance into that OLA complex where you see um, the middle school and high school share um, that particular campus. And so a second um, entrance way that allows traffic to flow beyond the OLA road entrance um, point is going to really improve the flow of uh, particularly uh, commuter traffic, um, but also of course athletic traffic um, which can also get very congested in that Ola Road community and especially with the addition of that Publix and that shopping plaza on the corner. So it really is going to be a nice investment in keeping that uh, so Ola academic and athletic uh, tradition strong and, um, and yet also increasing the um, movement of, uh, of commuter traffic and school traffic that uh, just in that area. I do for middle school we actually see the same need for an additional addition to that um, school. And that will also allow for the current um, growth and the foreseeable growth for the Union Grove Middle um, Campus. And what, I'll, uh, what I will also mention is that um, we are really governed by the Georgia Department of Education when it comes to the use of our classroom spaces in any one of our schools. But you also have to have certain capacity of your cafeteria and commons area, your kitchen where food prep occurs, your media center. Each one of those schools, Union Grove Middle, Ola Middle, and Ola High School have actually been built to receive an addition in order to accommodate the growth that has been anticipated. Ola Elementary School has previously received that same type of addition in a previous East Blast that you heard J.D. Harden review just a moment ago. So I think as far as conscientious awareness of the attraction people have to the Henry County community at large and preparing for growth of the student body, these um, additions are the right step forward to invest in uh, creating the learning space for, for the kids who attend um, those particular clusters. Superintendent Davis, uh, Ms. Cobb, you want to share anything about uh, some of the some of the excitement uh, there in uh, District Three as as you've been able to to speak with many of your constituents? Yes, um, I am especially excited. Well, really about all the projects, but really about um, the STEM high school that is planned, um, and it actually will benefit all of the students in our whole county, the ones who may be interested in going into that field. Um, they would have a, an opportunity to apply to attend there. Um, so that's gonna be a benefit really for our entire county. Um, so that's just really exciting for our future and those students to just you know, have access to that even increased level of academic rigor. 
Um, so that's just going to be such a great thing for our county, I believe, and just really something that our community spoke to as we were out listening uh, STEM and robotics and fine arts. Um, so I, I appreciate always uh, our community members sharing with us what your hopes and dreams are. And I'm so uh, thankful to our team who actually took, you know, all of those ideas and compiled them into this great list of projects. So I'm super excited about all of it and I'm just really honored to represent you in District 3. JD, if I'm, I might add a comment in yes, regard sir. to the STEM uh, high school, uh, as we have attracted more and more advanced manufacturing and technical businesses to Henry County, uh, one of the things they've been interested in is our Academy of uh, Advanced Studies. We often take prospects to see the school and they're amazed. And we have hosted uh, some, some uh, forums there at the Academy. And we are anticipating the same sort of response and enthusiasm in regard to the STEM school. So I, I think that that's a very, very wise investment. And I congratulate the board for looking at that. Fantastic. Thank you, Mr. Meadows, for, for being able to share that. It's always great to have that business perspective and um, because it truly is one of the number one uh, questions uh, that is asked so often when businesses look at relocating and when families look at uh, moving to Henry County. And with the population growing as it is, we like to think that's largely because of our school district and, and the, the wonderful job that uh, so many people uh, do each day to support our students and, of course, our staff and making sure that uh, everything is uh, top notch. Uh, one of the questions we did have from our community was asking about the, uh, you know, where, where can they vote? And uh, you know, if you visit the Henry County Board of Commissioners website, uh, that can help fill in um, the space as far as, you know, what district you may uh, reside in uh, and to ensure that you're at the right voting uh, place. I know the Secretary of State's website is also uh, a useful tool for people trying to locate their voting precinct. So I would encourage anyone uh, still trying to uh, navigate that, whether they're new to our county or, or maybe they just want a refresher to visit those uh, pages. If you're looking for the easiest way and you want to early vote, you can go right downtown to downtown McDonough to the election uh, board of elections, uh, you know, facility and their offices and they are conducting you know early voting uh, during normal business hours so it encourage people to take advantage of that um, because you never know what could happen on election day and so uh, it's just one easy resource for for people uh, during these hectic times that we live in so all that being said, um, I would you know we're getting close to uh, what we had kind of hoped uh, to, to you know maintain uh, as far as uh, our timing of tonight's event. And so what I'd like to do is start uh, with uh, Mr. Meadows and we'll work our way uh, all the way back to Superintendent Davis to round us out. So Mr. Meadows, any uh, parting thoughts that you have for us this evening? I'm due in court in the morning. And as soon as I finish, I'm going across the street to the election board to vote. You heard it right there. I mean, <laughs> we've got it on our list. We're putting it on our checklist, so our to-do list. So thank you uh, for sharing that. And thank you for the words that you were able to uh, provide for us this evening about uh, you know how important this is to our community. Uh, Mrs. Clay, do you have anything you'd like to share as we uh, round things out? I guess my parting thought is just ensuring, you know, to repeat, it's not a new tax. Uh, East Plus 5, the collections uh, go until 2022. What's before the voters is a continuation of that one penny tax come 2023. Um, and so it's not a new tax, it's a continuation of a tax that is invested in the school system. Fantastic. Thank you so very much. Uh, Dr. Knowlton, our Chief of Staff, what, what, uh, what would you like to say as we round things out this evening? Thank you, J.D. I just want to take this opportunity to thank everyone for being here this evening as we strive to enhance the learning experience for every student that we serve here in Henry County. So thank you all for being here and have a great evening. Board Chair Cobb, I will uh, uh, turn it to you and then I'll let you kick it over to uh, Superintendent Davis to round us out. Thank you, J.D. I'm just really so excited to be here. Um, thank you again uh, for joining us and so really excited about the list of projects because I truly, truly believe that um, if the voters choose to pass this East Bluss, that it really will just take our, our students in our county just to that next level. I think that's what we all are wanting and desiring for our students in our entire county. And I'm just so excited about the future 
uh, I just truly believe uh, great days are ahead of us. So thank you again for joining us. I'll turn it over to Dr. Baker. Well, thank you, uh, Mrs. Cobb and to the entire panel. Um, what I would really like, just like to reiterate is that our community is calling upon us to have and to be a high performing district for every child. And the continued opportunity to be in conversation and for an invitation to invest in the future of our kids' academic experiences is what's really upon us. And yes, it probably would be easy to say, maybe this isn't the time, there's too much complexity in our world right now. But what we all know is that our kids' futures aren't gonna wait for us. And so being a part of leading in this region and in this state means getting in front of where the investments need to be for our kids. And so I just thank you for spending some time to, to get involved and to be a part of our, our ongoing conversation. And we thank you for your generous time this evening. So uh, Mr. Hardin, back to you to wrap us up. As always, folks, we thank you for the time that you've carved out, whether you're at home currently tuning in or you're watching this uh, at a later uh, time. We thank you for the time you've spent and the investment you're uh, considering making uh, by way of you know finding out all about East Bloss and being as informed as possible. Uh, we would remind you that if you have questions, you want to see this whole uh, presentation or share it with your friends and family, email it out. You can visit our Henry County Schools website and find this presentation on the home screen. Or if you would like to uh, you know, find out what a specific school is receiving, you can visit that school's website in this same presentation with those specifics are also included as a part of that. We thank you again for joining us for this latest East Bloss 6 Town Hall Forum. Have a great evening and we hope that you'll go out and vote. Take care. <laughs>